Good evening ladies and gentlemen, this is Commissar here, and today I have a 1 vs 1 StarCraft 2 commentary for you, featuring White Ra and Night End. So Night End is the player I am on at the moment, a red Protoss player, in the bottom left hand side of the map today. And his opponent in this PvP is none other than White Ra. Night End of course representing Team Fnatic, he is, yeah he is our, I suppose our underdog today. You'll see that he came second in the WCS uh, Combined European Nationals recently. So what was that? That was basically like the WCS Nationals, but for all the small nations, sort of pretending they're one nation sort of thing. Where you had like Spanish, Swiss, Bul Swiss Bulgarian players, uh, even a South African player, a Panda Tank, you may have heard of him, uh, all coming together for one big tournament where they all played out together to get spots in the WCS Europe Finals. And of course, Nightend got one of those spots, and a $1,000 prize from that tournament. White Rod got a similar prize from the Ukrainian Nationals, where he similarly came second. So I did say that Nightend was an underdog, but to be honest, that's probably not even true. It's probably a fairly similar game, you'd have to say, for these two players, fairly evenly rated. And at the moment, you'll see both players, well, Nightend, since that WCS uh, combined European Nationals, hasn't really done that much, he hasn't really achieved anything. He hasn't really made any impact on the scene. I mean, although, of course, White Ra hasn't actually either, to be honest. But he has, of course, attracted a lot of attention to himself with his live stream, with his website, building his brand, building his fan base, and he is indeed very, very popular at the moment with his Heart of the Swarm special tactics series, which you can indeed get the replays from on his website if you happen to have Heart of the Swarm access, which I don't. Anyway, so uh, White Ra, of course, we will indeed see the cyber cores of both players being very similarly timed, although Night End being, I believe, uh, one probe ahead, probably, uh, even on probes, surprisingly. Uh, I'm just trying to spot the difference here for Night End, because his cyber core was indeed slower, his gateway was a bit slower. And I feel like it might be a chrono thing, no, it's just going to be slightly slower uh, units for Night End here, so he's slightly behind, which seems a little bit odd. But nonetheless, it of course probably won't matter at this stage in the game, and we are going to see both players get double gas. You'll notice that neither player have probes in their opponent's... Sorry. White Rye doesn't have a probe in Nighten's base. Uh, Nighten has a probe in White Rye's base, so he's trying to harass to try and make sure that that probe doesn't put Nighten's economy behind his opponents. And he is doing that well. Very APM intensive, this sort of play. Um, meanwhile, though, White Rye, of course, is going to be kind of boosting that. Uh, warp gate out. He's going to be getting that two gates out quickly, which generally means a four gate defense build, as opposed to going for a four gate. And the gas from both players suggests that neither should be four gating, although White Rod could be doing some sort of early play. As you'll notice, only two guys on each gas geyser, which does mean a little bit more gas than, uh, say, having three guys, sorry, um, three guys and one, one on the other, that sort of thing. It is more efficient than that. But of course, it does mean that White Ra doesn't want to commit fully to this gas production, but now he does on 3 on each. And that is going to see him probably not 4 gate, but nonetheless apply some early pressure off what looks like 2 gates. We'll have to see if a 3rd gate is added on right now. And a Robo, so yeah, it will be a macro play coming out of White Ra, long term oriented play. Meanwhile, Nighting's base looks remarkably similar to White Ra's, with again the 2 warp gates producing those, uh, Sorkers, sorry? as well as the Cybercore being chrono boosted to be about on time with White Ra's, as well as the Robo, sorry, not coming down, but rather a Twilight Council for Night End. So it will indeed be Blink, I believe, against perhaps Immortals and Colossi. We'll have to wait and see about the expansion timings too, as of course expanding is so, so, so crucial in this matchup, as it is very, very risky indeed. Night End's going to get an early lead here, could get a Sorka, yes he does! That's going to give him a very, very big lead in the early game, as basically, without that extra Stalker, and Night End having lost nothing from that, White Rod can't really continue to pressure in this early game. He has to wait for a few minutes before he can pressure. And even then, a single Stalker in this matchup can be really, really crucial. Uh, it may sound little, but really it's not, to be honest. Uh, even at my level in low masses, a single Stalker is crucial. And anyway, Blink is on the way for Night End, so of course that Stalker count being very, very crucial when your build is Mass Stalkers. And I'll have to wait and see what Right Right has to deal with that. He will indeed have Immortals on the field. At the moment, we do see zero Immortals. The first is now on the way, as well as an increased Warpgate unit count, you'd assume. 
uh, with sentries coming out, but sentries not very effective against blink. We do indeed see the observers also on the way for Night End to enable him to blink into the base of White Ra. And really, White Ra has to see this here. Does he see it? Uh, Rats the wrong camera, so it's kind of hard to tell. He definitely sees the stalkers now, and I'm fairly sure he would have seen that. If you look at that uh, unit vision, I'm fairly sure that he saw the stalkers. So I'm pretty sure that at this stage, Night End would know the build of his opponent, and now he definitely knows it, as he sees both a Twilight Council and aerobotics. Of course, the Observer of White Ra is now dead, but it saw everything it needed to see. The only thing that could have been better for White Ra was having the Observer alive and as well, and trying to kill off the Observer of Night End. As without an Observer, Blink plays tend to suck, as you can't really blink into your opponent's base. But, White Ra is in a position such that, really, uh, Night End shouldn't be able to get into his main base. And if he stays out there, he could be okay, but at the same time, Potentially, if his units got passed by Night End, if the high ground was taken by Night End, Night End would be in such a good spot. Are well, we going to see the blink out before engagement does take place? Night End is going to be very cautious here. He's going to send out an observer to support the army of his opponent and to try and maybe get the high ground vision to, to blink into the top high ground over here. Meanwhile, though, White Rider does see it and he is going to maybe get it. No, he doesn't. He's going to have to pull back and try to deal with these stalkers, which is the tricky thing when you're against blink. Because you can't move away out of position, or you could risk losing everything basically that you have in your base. Night End though does have an inferior army in a head-on-head -head battle, can't take it on directly, and oh, Night End losing one stalker. That is going to cost him dearly as he is behind in supply already. He is though expanding to this location off the back of it, trying to be a bit sneaky with that expand his third location. Blink of course enables him to defend it quite easily. Uh, compared to the natural. It's a fairly similar defensive situation. Although the opponent can attack from two directions at once. But I can see both players decide they want these rocks stared. Uh, interestingly enough, both players want the maneuverability. Uh, White Eye just wants to take on this army head on, and Night End, not going to lose anything this time, is though going to be forced to retreat. And overall, this Blink play has achieved remarkably little, and all it's done is put Night End behind on the Robo game. Night End, you will notice, is uh, going for Colossi already though. Meanwhile, White Ra actually staying with a mortal tech, so White Ra is indeed the player with the expansion up uh, earlier, I believe. I feel like I just said Night End was earlier a minute ago. Anyway, but White Ra is uh, slightly the same time-ish. Basically at the same time <laughs> as uh, Night End here in this game with the expansions. Uh, Robo though, Robux facility that is, is going to be slower. The big difference though being the immortal count, and four immortals is a big, big immortal count. White Rider does have his Robotics uh, Bay done now, and the Robotics Bay of White Rider could be sniped though. These Stalkers are down here, they're just going for probes though, and going to try and get out of here before they do indeed die, and oh, one Stalker going to die. And that is going to be it, so not the worst result in the end for Night End there. Going to get six Walker Kills in this game so far. Not the worst thing in the world, and he is indeed going to be ahead by one Harvester now. So he has certainly evened up the economy game through that little play here. But is he watching over here? He could gonna lose units here, and oh, losing units unnecessarily is Night End. Very, very unfortunate for him, as he did have vision of that army. A little bit sloppy here overall with that control for Night End, with that minimap awareness. And we do indeed see Night End with two Colossi out on the field now. Should be okay against this army, although the Immortals could potentially ruin his day if they get some good shots off on those Colossi. Thermal Lance, though, is, I believe, done for Night End. Yes, it is done. They cannot range these Immortals nicely. And these Stalkers are going to be very weak, although they blink in, going to see an Immortal sniped, as well as a bunch of Stalkers. The Immortals are going straight after the Colossi, are going to force them back out of the engagement, and the Immortals are going to get the Colossi at least out of the way. And, oh my god, a pause during that battle. It must have been hard for Night End, but he is indeed going to be okay, keeping both Colossi alive miraculously, whilst all of his Stalkers were able to take out those Immortals. So White Rock going for it, going hard, and this rush to... to oh my god, a War Prison plays in the main. And this Nexus could go down here, but ow, it's going to be close, and I believe it'll actually be cleaned up, so White Ra uh, going to come out way, way behind here. Even going to lose the War Prism with the Zealots inside of it. And as I was going to say, I was going to say that Night End's uh, rush to Robotics Bay was paying off really, really nicely for him. What's also paid off for him is being able to clean up in his main base as this Nexus is still alive. He is still off 2 base to 2 base. He now has the bigger army, now has the Colossus Count lead. White Rod does have a second Colossus now, making it 2 to 3 in favor of Night End. 
but with a smaller gateway army and a lower Colossus count, it's going to be very, very hard for White right here. He's going to do his best to hold off, though. It is going to be low health Colossi. If they can be focused down with something, it would be great for White Rower. But what can focus them down, really, is trying to get cannons to survive a little bit better. The Colossi could just kill them from afar. No problem. Just going to try and delay that gateway army of his opponent trying to prevent Blinks into the probe line. I mean, although it's just going to be a few Zealots and a couple of Colossi against a much bigger force in all respects except for Zealots. Anyway, all the Blinkin going to get White Run's first Colossus. He does have two more left. One of the High Gun is going to be taken out almost immediately after it's built. It is going to go down. The Soka count is low, but it's still higher than White Ra's. And Night End is going to blink in here and kill that final Colossus very, very easily. And Night End is going to take this game with a very, very solid win in the end. That blink play seemed to fail miserably, but it gave him the tech he needed to go forward, and White Ra overcommitted to those immortals, which of course bit him in the backside when he faced an army of Colossi, and those Colossi had range. So without range, Night End would have been smashed by those immortals, but with the range of course was able to smash White Ra instead. So, White Ra being thoroughly beaten by what Night End this game, in what was a surprisingly uh, good turnaround for Night End really. Army composition of course being the key factor, not supply, not so much economy, all army composition and perhaps a little bit of positioning engagement. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed it. A bit of PvP, a rarely casted matchup. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys on another day. And please subscribe to my channel if you like it and please leave me some feedback if you would please. Thank you.